I'm Ron and I'm back again, you know, already with another round of sports reviews. But tonight we are reviewing Toronto Maple Leafs at the St. Louis Blues. Hockey Night in Canada, Toronto Maple Leafs 5, St. Louis Blues 2. By the way, I was at the game. You'll get the vlog of that tomorrow, but I'm doing the RSR tonight, so let's get into it. First, in the first period, five goals. Wouldn't you know it? Fast start for a game between two great teams Two great hockey teams, one a sleeping giant, the other was a sleeping giant the year before, but did what the Leafs are going to do, or sh I want them to do, but I think they will do. Point being is, is you know what it is. First goal, an assist by Mitch Marner, Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew boy, Mitch Marner to Zach Hyman, Mitch Marner to Zach Hyman, Zach Hyman at the point shoots. Blocker side on Jordan Bennington, 1-0. Then later in the first period, Ivan Barbashev scores off a bar-in bar shot on, on Freddie's glove side, bar-in, 1-1. Then 2-1, Nylander passes to Matthews at the point. M Matthews shoots 5-hole. Scores on Bennington, 2-1. Bennington didn't get the pad down in time. Scores 2-1. The third goal was on shorthanded for the Toronto Maple Leafs. The third goal. Shorthanded, again, a penalty against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shorthanded, Pierre Engvall with a great poke check to start a breakaway. Hyman catches up to him. They go two on nobody on Jordan Bennington. Skate at him. Passes it. Engvall passes it to Hyman for the assist. Hyman taps it in. 3-1. And then 4-1. What? And then 4-1 in the period was on the power play. Morgan Riley passes to Jason Spezza on the blue line. Spezza rockets it. 4-1 Leafs. And that's where it would go in to the first intermission. And that was a great start by the Toronto Maple Leafs. They started on time. I know they do with Sheldon Keefe, except the first two games. But now that they have Keefe, they've been starting on time. And what a start by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And they ran away with it. They ran away with it. A Babcock coached Toronto Maple Leafs team, unless they were clinical with their chances, would not do this. I got lucky going to this game with Sheldon Keefe as the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, who I said should have been head coach from day one this season. Let's get back to that. I said Babcock should have been fired after game seven and Keefe should have been promoted. Who listened? Nobody. Actual nobody. But I was right. And guess what? Look at them now. Yeah, they had they lost to Colorado. They crumbled against Philadelphia. And they lost because of a Spezza mistake and another goal against Colorado. But those were two good performances for the most part. But this time, they had a 16-minute performance against the St. Louis Blues. The current Stanley Cup champions. That's something. That's something. So, in the second period, 5-1 on the power play, Austin Matthews. A rebound back to him, a little bit of yakety sacks in front of the net. Allen's in net by now, remember. Rebound to Matthews, he taps it in on blocker side of Jake Allen, and or glove side of Jake Allen, and it's 5-1. to one. And that's how we're going to the second intermission, and... 40 minutes of a great performance by the Toronto Maple Leafs and what a great what a great game by them. I'm happy I went to this game. And then in the third period, 5 to 2 Blues, Petrangelo puts it on, David Perron taps it in for 5 to 2 goal for the St. Louis Blues, but they would get their consolation goal, but that was it. The Toronto Maple Leafs win. The Leafs win 5-2 to two against the St. Louis Blues, the current Stanley Cup champions. And, and that's the Leafs saving their season. For you, the sky is falling, people. That was the Leafs saving their season right there. But let's remember something. I live in St. Louis. I saw what the Blues did last year. They were even lower than the Leafs. In a harder division. Last in the league at January 1st, the Leafs were two points out of third in the Atlantic.
and it's December. And this team is better on paper than what the Blues were last year. Or at least the Blues are performing to what they were on paper this year. Let's say something. This Leafs team is too good to finish that low. Are the Bruins running away with for the first seed in the Atlantic and even the Divi in the conference? Yes. Does that matter? No. We're not scared of the Bruins anymore. And honestly, with Sheldon Keefe, I think we'll beat them in the playoffs in this conference semifinals. That's not the problem. Do we need to get home ice in the playoffs? Yes. Will we make the playoffs? Probably. Probably. I believe it. The sky is not falling or was not falling at all. At, at all. Y'all were losing your minds. For what? For what, Leafs fans? Ask Blues fans what they had to see. What they had to go through in the first half of the season to get to that second half of the season run and win the Stanley Cup. I shouldn't be comparing what the Leafs and the Blues did, but it's pretty damn close. And, they'll, and the Leafs will probably do it. Two years in a row. That makes me happy because I live here and it was nice to see the Blues do what they did. But this year, the Leafs will be facing the Blues in the Cup. And they will beat the Blues in the Cup to pull off what they pulled off, but a little bit less of an achievement because they were never last. They were just low, started slow. But whatever. It's something. So, the good's about... I just had to have that little bit of a rant. Just to remind you, since it is the Blues, and since I live in St. Louis, and I was at the game, and... Yeah, for you people, where the Le you say the Leafs, were, their season was nearing over, the sky's falling, they saved their season. They saved their season. Not a problem. All I'm saying is is the sky was never falling, and if you thought the sky was falling, you were either listening to the media, or you, maybe you're more scarred than I am. Because I live in St. Louis, even though I'm a Leafs fan, I know they were never good, but this is the best team I've ever seen iced for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Better than 04, better than 13, definitely better than all the years they didn't make the playoffs. Hell, even better than the last two years. And they made the playoffs well, the last three years. This is a good team. This is a very good team. They're too good to miss the playoffs. Too good. And I don't care if you're Brian Burke thinking that paying $40 million to your top four forwards is a bad idea. They are a good team. The sky was never falling, okay? Leave that alone, and they're going to make the playoffs. And they're going to make the cup. They're going to win the cup. May take seven games. It's going to happen in St. Louis, and I will be there to see the Leafs lift the cup. Simple as, that's that. And let me talk about some of the goods of the game and some of the bads of the game. Some of the goods of the game, well, actually, there wasn't really any bads unless you're talking about the St. Louis Blues. So, really, there wasn't really any bad of the game. The goods of the game, I think, were Zach Hyman, Austin Matthews, Freddie putting on a great performance, the defense putting on a great performance that I haven't seen in a while, and Pontus Aberg. What a player. Me, I would not be mad if they traded Janssen to bring in some defensive help and put Pontus Aberg in a spot. Why? Because Pontus Aberg was checking Four checking, back check, back checking, a good skater. This guy is something. He is talent. Just like Kapanen, just like Marner, just like all the younger players. Even J Janssen, he's better than Janssen. Auberg is a good player. I mean, I saw something tonight. That guy, he's special. Pontus Auberg is special. Know that. Pontus Auberg is a special player, and he needs to stay. And if he stays in the lineup, I think the Leafs are better. And what do we need to do? Trade for defensive help. So I say trade Janssen. I say trade Andreas Janssen and play Pontus Auberg. That's what I say. Just like Nick Patan. They're giving the Marlies guys a little bit of a chance under something that Mike Babcock would never do. Something that a coach like him would never do. And that's a good thing. Because here's the thing. Coaches like Babcock 
and Brian Burke and Randy Carlisle, they are running out of time. And of course, this guy, people are going to be like, yeah, this guy kind of looks like Kyle Dubas. Of course, he's preaching analytics and stuff. But here's the thing. I want to see good hockey players, good games. Look at the Blues. Craig Berube, masterful. He's a great head coach. I was hoping the Blues would be stupid enough to let him go after the playoffs last year and the Leafs pick him up. But you know what? Sheldon Keefe is great enough. But Craig Berube, masterful coach. But that shows you something about Sheldon Keefe. If you can outplay a masterful coach like Craig Berube, you're great. You're great. From the AHL up. No, not even the AHL. The OHL. The Sioux. To the Marlies. To the Leafs. This guy had something. This guy knows what he's doing behind the bench. Mike Babcock had no damn idea what he was doing behind the bench. All he was like, oh, oh, oh. Let's just put up Warner. And the, the top power play unit. And just have Marner do everything and not even shoot with a defenseman. Yes, that, that's perfect. Oh, we won't even care about defense. We'll just try to outshoot people even though my idea is grit. Where, where, what, what is that? Oh, by the way, Mike Babcock never won a playoff series since he won. Since 2013. What was the idea of that? That was a Lou Lamorello hire. Not in a Brendan Shanahan hire. Not a Kyle Dubas hire. I mean, he did get hired later. But the point is, is Babcock ran his course. Even before this year, he should have got the axe after Game 7, but they didn't. He should have got the axe. He didn't. And we paid for it. Now we have to make our way back, but we are going to make our way back because we have a coach who actually knows how to coach hockey in 2019. And I saw it. Players like Pontus Auberg, Nick Patan getting chances, Mitch Marner getting chances to play the way he normally should play, not just playing a little bit of a watered-down version of himself. Let's say that watered-down version of himself was regular Mountain Dew. Now he's code red. I know I don't have a blue Mountain Dew. Just follow along. Because this is better than regular Mountain Dew. Under Babcock, he was regular Mountain Dew. Code Red is better than the regular. Under, under Sheldon Keefe, he's Code Red. Because that is better than the original. But, and every player is playing like they should play. What we signed them for. Not some gritty game. And funnily enough, the first fight that I saw this year happened tonight. And yeah, Dermot got dummied by Brower, but come on. At least they fought. Which is something you should see. They outplayed the Blues, they outskated the Blues, they outskated the champions, and they won 5-2. to two. The Toronto Maple Leafs are going somewhere, and that's all I'm going to say. Everything about the Toronto Maple Leafs was good tonight except a couple of defensive mistakes. Player of the game, I'm going to give it both to, I'm going to give it to Hyman and Matthews. Great players tonight. I don't know why Hyman didn't get the first star, but they both had doubles, braces. Five to two. You know what it is. And yeah, Jason Spezza scored the other. Wow. Um, you know what it is. So if you like this video, like it, share it, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends that the Leafs are back. Sheldon's at the wheel. Tell me how good does it feel. I'm Ryan and I'm out. Peace.